Hello, my people. You all need to watch this video. This man that is standing here, I know you guys know him. There is nobody that will tell me that he or she doesn't know this man. This is our legend, our Nollywood legend called Hank Anuku. This is Hank Anuku that was going viral at that time that he is having mental issue. Like he don't call. Him. So many people call him all kinds of names that he is not. He's not acting again. Like he don't enter streets. He don't demand and all of that my people hmm um, uh, those people that were saying all of those things those people who recorded him and posted him saying that the man don't follow like you guys need to come and watch this video and hear the real truth his story like if you guys hear this man's story eh, his stories are so touching even his own family member like since when that thing started when he, he was going viral and people were calling him all, all kinds of name naming him all kinds of things like when those things was going viral at that time even his own family members abandoned him they thought it was true even his career even people that were calling him for work they couldn't call him again all oh, everybody thought it was true and it affected him a lot like he said a lot of things and i want you guys to watch this video video credit to lucky udu who interviewed him and allow him to share his story to the whole world like god will bless this guy lucky udu for interviewing this man because he's somebody that is still alive that can defend himself like this man have come out to defend himself to say what really really happened you guys should just hear his story watch this video to the end my people how many of you remember this man mr hanks anoku his video went viral some time ago and a lot of people had so many negative things to say about that very video. And those rumors nearly ended his career. That's him! Jesus Christ, that's an Anuku for fuck's sake. Those of you that are always too quick to bring out your phone to film people without their knowledge, you put a misleading caption on the video, post it, and it goes viral. You have no idea how long that video can go in affecting that person's life, career, and family. What you're about to hear is the story of how a single video nearly ended this man's career and destroyed his life. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this is you, Mr. Hanks Anoku. Where have you been? I'm being around, hustling and bustling, trying to get my ex together. Yeah. Oh my goodness, we saw a video of you on TikTok training. You were taking a walk and you were not looking so happy in that very video. And people had a lot to say about that. What do you have to say about that very video? Well, this is not just one video shot or what people think. Anyway, uh, in that day, I was trying to get myself into character, you know, for a role that I was going to play, you know, madman role, you know, one who was not in his correct senses or frame of mind. So I had to go, you know, naturally visit the environment to see how I would play it in that same neighborhood. Oh, okay. What you're trying to say is that you had a character, you had a role to play of a character of a madman, and you just decided to take a stroll. Somebody saw you, brought out his phone, took a picture, took a video of you, and posted it online, and just said something that was not really true. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You know, the different kinds of people who go insane. You know, you have the loud ones, you have the quiet ones, and there are all sorts of insanities that you cannot even express, but. I had to show it in the way the director wanted me to show it and I, I was just meditating and trying to get into character and that's it. Alright guys, so if I can understand what you're saying, sir, um, you, were, you had a role to play. Although Mr. Hanks is well known for his action scenes, but he's an actor and sometimes he could take the role of a different character, maybe a mad person or somebody who is poor or something like that. And um, you were shooting and you needed to be in character, so he decided to take a walk. And while you were taking a walk, you were meditating. To get into character. To get into character. It was a deep, deep 
scene and character. And then the person brought out his phone, took a video of you, posted. I wasn't even aware of it because I was not looking at anybody. I was just concentrating on myself. Okay, sir. And the script. Okay, sir. So I also heard something about your health. That was a long time ago. They said something about your health. I don't know if you want to make a comment about it. Um, they said a lot of stuff. You know, rumors can be rumors. What were some things they said that you heard about? They said I was sick. I was on drugs and all that. I'm, I'm not sick. I was not on drugs. Maybe uh, they saw me depressed. You know, depression can bring stress but for me to be on drugs that's not true and I, i'm not a madman i'm very sane and i'm very healthy i exercise a lot i do my martial arts exercises i do a lot of sports to play basketball sometimes volleyball i can take good walks because walking is good exercise i do a lot of stuff as a spirit commands is what i do man it's a free will I don't come to your house and knock on your door if I'm not invited. I just, I just want to be free, man. You know, like in the States, you're free. In England, you're free. Everybody looks at you. It's only in Nigeria that people stick out their necks from the windows to see if you have something or something or whatever. It's very bad. People should learn to take the block out of their eyes before they see this prank in mind. Mind your business and be of good character. Be a good soul or else you go to hell. It's as simple as that. Wow. Oh, I wonder who posted that video, actually. That video had a long way. It went in affecting his life. He lost friends. Producers could no longer contact him for... I lost a lot of money, man. I lost jobs. I was jobless. People didn't care about me. It was God who directed my footsteps onto good soil. How he did it, I don't know. But I'm giving glory and thanks to him all the time. I went through pain. I went through pain. If you were in my shoes, you would feel it. it was, I was heartbroken for these people to do this to me, man. I bring laughter to you, bring dancing to you. You don't pay me for it. It's my energy, my sweat, my thoughts, and the power of God in me that does that. Because I pray without season. That's in 1 Thessalonians 5.17. So what is wrong with me teaching you not to be bad, but to be good? Because I'm an actor, I can paint, I can sculpt, I'm versatile in arts. I had distinction in art when I was a kid in Loyola College of Baton. I just didn't have the opportunity to have people who love what I do to come and say, hey man, we can help you, we love what you do. If it wasn't the stage that was leaving the stage and I didn't come back to Nigeria or in England, I wouldn't be this poor. You know, I would have been, I employed Caucasians. When I was a security officer, I employed Caucasians. They were working under me. The guy came back thinking I would have a good time in my own country. Look at the way the country is now. Just because someone's doing something good that you don't like it, and then you want to be like that person, then you decide to stigmatize the person. You know, it's not good to be antagonists against a good man. Because God is watching, even if somebody's not watching. God is watching everybody. Your time will come. But my time now is to rise and shine. And I'm forgiving the that. And I tell people, stop writing these things against people. It's not a good character. It's a curse. And it'll affect you. Because the law of karma affects people. It comes back to you. And then you say you're sick or you died out of this and that. That's because of the evil things you do to good people. And God have mercy on every one of us, man. It affected me so a great deal, you know. I, I, I had to do away with friends, some who were my friends stopped calling me friend, you know. Both male and female. I was, you know, stigmatized in the industry, in the AG and the Actors Guild, Nigeria, Directors Guild. Producers Guild, Marketers Guild, you know, gossips, backbiters, mummers. It was like a spiritual and a physical war for me. They kind of like left me on my own. So I said, it is, I, I am not alone. I'm with Jesus Christ, you know, even though my family has a negative uh, 
thought about me, me and Eric Kinsella. Some people say I was on drugs, or hard drugs. I don't do hard drugs. You know, back in the days, I used to smoke, but not now anymore. Now, you know, I never went into anything hard drugs. I had self-control, you know. I was probably, after a while, I was, I was depressed and, and had to um, maybe ha have a little drink. Or, well, I drink is maybe star beer or, or wine, you know, that's it. I don't drink hard liquor. But I was just isolated because I never thought I would be betrayed by my own people. You know, it hurt me so much, just like what Jesus had done unto him by Judas Iscariot. It's wrong to betray people who love you. So after that video was posted, it went viral. Um, people could no longer invite you for jobs anymore. No, they didn't. They didn't. They believed the evil part of the story. Or oh, you were stigmatized. People avoided you. Actors, actresses, producers, directors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you couldn't really take care of your family like before anymore. No, I couldn't. What were some of the most difficult things you experienced? Why all this happened? What were what were like your lowest moments? It was, you know, when I was uh, left alone by my family, my immediate family. They deserted me, you know, and that hurt me a lot. My twin brother, even up till now, he doesn't believe that I'm not what the people say I am. You know, all of them just deserted me, but it's okay. God is there. Wow, I feel... I feel slightly emotional at this moment. I can't imagine all the pains you've had to go through. Yeah, you know, you know it was not easy. You know, my birthday, I saw it. I saw that even those friends I thought I had never even came out. Just one or two or three people who, who gave a little bit here, a little bit there for me to have that cake baked and buy a few drinks from the people that came. Most of the people who came over, I didn't even know them. You know. But that's what it is. Before, well, my birthday was awesome. Man. You see people just come and do a lot of stuff, good stuff. But I guess when they see me now, they'll have a change of mind. I like the way you speak. You're so eloquent. And the accent is not Nigerian. Um, where did you grow? I grew up a lot. Most times are. It was back in the days in Europe, in the States, uh, most partially England. And I was more in England than in the States and um, other countries like Italy as well, you know. I, I traveled a lot. So you've been to a lot of countries? Yeah, I have. How many languages can you speak? Well, dialects, you're very both some houses, you know, languages, Italian, some Dutch, some French. Yeah, could you speak French? Um, but... Comment je vais? Ça va bien, merci. Très bien, merci. Wow, that's... Wait, could you speak Italian? Yeah, comment est-ce que tu as dit? Tu es à posto? Je suis normalement bonissimo, je suis vraiment comme ça. J'ai géré tout le monde pour tant d'années avant. Oh, those of you you live in Italy, if you're watching this video, what is he saying? Please put it down in the comment section. Let's know if it's accurate. Could you speak Dutch? Uh, we guys heist there was heist as Hank Anuku. That's what's my name. My name's Hank Anuku. Yeah. Wow, could you speak um, Yoruba? Ah, Yoruba, I'm going to go. 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 Oh my goodness, well, what about Ibo? When you've been a man, when you're cruising in or cruising and on the cruise in Germany, so come my water girl, only for me, maybe I am in the zero to cook and never for break when soon. Jesus Christ, no wonder people say that you speak Ibo like you are speaking um, English. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about Hausa? Oh, Kadan Kadayade, you know, when you get your love, your casual, you know, just like that. 
Oh my goodness, Mr. Hank still has it in here. Do you have a phone number people can reach out to for those who have jobs that want to? You want to partner with him, you want to collaborate on a project with him. Mr. Hanks is ever ready and he has so much value to offer. If you also like to support him because Mr. Hanks has been going through a lot, there were some things that he should have said there but he didn't want to say it because of future and because of his family. But I can tell you that that video went a long way to affect his life and things are no longer the same which used to be for him anyway. Um, he said he lost friends, he lost a lot of jobs, he lost so many opportunities and it seems like the world left him behind. So I'm thanking God for the opportunity to interview him and talk about these things because the truth is that there are so many people out there who are going through difficulties in life but they do not have the platform to actually share it to people who can actually help them i am grateful to be able to serve in this um avenue could you call your phone number please yeah my phone numbers are 0802 one five five and the second number is zero nine zero three nine six four eight four two three zero nine zero three nine six four eight four two three there's definitely somebody out there who loves you who will give you support will answer you when you call all right thank you so much sir thank you so much for the privilege to have this interview i sincerely appreciate one thing i should let you guys know is that Mr. Hanks is from Delta State. I'm also from Delta State, but that's not it. My mom is from Owoibo, and he's from Owoibo as well. So I'll say that we are brothers, right? <laughs> oh, that is, that is so nice. That is so beautiful and touching at the same time because some of the story really touched me. I no go lie, Sha. For this man to even come out, like, it is a very good privilege for us. Like, I'm so happy seeing him, seeing himself like this, uh, talking. I'm so happy. It's just like I'm watching him on TV. Like, it has been really, really long we saw Hank Anoko, like, uh, acting and all of that. Like, I just pray this man come back, come back fully. Like, people start giving him work calling him the way they normally call him because that thing that happened that time really, really affected him, I must confess. Like, before this man can even come out like this, that means the thing really touched him. The thing really affected him because, ah, I think this Lucky Udo uh, platform is a very good platform for people to come out and say their mind openly, like freely. You get, this is a very big opportunity for people to, people that are depressed, like when you talk, when you speak out, you'll be free. Yeah, this is good though. This is really, really nice. And I pray that everything become okay. Like you guys, I, even with this video self, people, some people will still doubt him. <laughs> oh my eh? Like, we don't need to even mind people, self that are commenting and saying everything. Like, people must talk. That is one thing about life. People must talk. But I pray that everything becomes good for him again. You guys, share your thoughts in the comment section. Tell us what you think. And don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next update. And just bye for now.